Listeners in Italy, I apologize in advance. Today, we're talking about American pizza. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we use stories to help you upgrade your English. And today's mouth-watering story is all about pizza, specifically the different kinds of pizza you can get in the United States. If you've only had Domino's, then listen up. This story is for you. In the second half of today's episode, I'll show you how to use the English expression made of. This is lesson number 699 of Plain English. How about that? We're almost at another round number. One more in the 600s for you. JR is the producer, and he has put this lesson at plainenglish.com slash 699. Not too long ago, pizza was a relatively unknown ethnic food in the United States. Italian immigrants brought pizza to East Coast cities in the 1880s. But it wasn't until about the 1940s that it spread from Italian neighborhoods into the American mainstream. Today, of course, pizza is one of the most popular foods in the United States. You see pizza on the dinner table, at parties, in conference rooms at the office, at bowling alleys. Anywhere people get together is a good place to have pizza. American pizza is quite different from traditional Neapolitan pizza. Almost all American-style pizzas have a thicker crust than Italian pizzas have. And most of the time, an American-style pizza is made for a group of people, not just as a single serving. There are many regional varieties, too many to talk about in just one episode, but here are some of the most famous. Start in New York, where pizza first arrived with waves of Italian immigrants in the late 19th century. A New York-style pizza is big, about 45 to 60 centimeters in diameter. And it's thin. The dough is stretched out by hand, and the slices are wide. So wide, in fact, that the most common way to eat a New York slice is by folding it. New Yorkers fold the wide crust in one hand. Folding a slice makes it easier to eat, and it catches the grease and the toppings. A New York slice can be eaten at a table with a knife and fork, but it's just as easy to enjoy your slice standing up with a paper plate. The traditional New York pizza is made of dough, tomato sauce with spices, and mozzarella cheese. Popular toppings are pepperoni, sausage, mushrooms, onions, and peppers. It's common to add oregano and red chili pepper flakes after it comes out of the oven. Speaking of the oven, Original pizzerias in New York used coal-fired ovens. For safety reasons, most are now gas-fired. New York is the king of the thin slice. Now, let's go to Chicago, which is known for its deep 
dish pizza. This is a pizza unlike anything you have ever seen. A single slice of deep dish pizza is a meal in itself, and most Chicagoans only have deep dish pizza once in a while. You'll know why in a second. A Chicago-style slice starts with a very thick crust. The crust is an inch thick and has a buttery taste. It's cooked in a circular metal pan with high sides. The cheese goes on the bottom, followed by the toppings, followed by a generous helping of sauce. So the order of the ingredients is different from other pizza styles, which put the sauce on the bottom and the cheese and the ingredients on top. When a Chicago pizza is ready to eat, you need a special spatula to serve the individual slices. It really is like a thick piece of pie. And don't try to eat this with your hands, or, God forbid, try to fold it. This is a pizza you eat with a knife and fork. A deep dish pizza takes about 30 minutes to bake, so if you go to Giordano's, Lou Malnati's, or Uno's and order a deep dish pizza, expect to wait a while. You can't really buy single slices. What do Chicagoans do when they're not having deep dish? The city has a distinctive thin crust style too. It's called tavern pizza. Tavern pizza has a very thin, crispy crust. The pizza is a circle but it's cut into small squares, which are easy to snack on and share with a group. This is the pizza you'd bring to a party. Everyone can have as many of the small squares as they like. Chicago tavern-style pizza is easy to eat with your hands. There's another city with a thick pizza style, and that's Detroit, Michigan. Detroit is the traditional home to America's car-making industry. Detroit-style pizza is cooked in a steel automotive pan, the kind car companies used to store car parts in the factory or to catch grease. You heard that right. They cook Detroit pizza in a style of pan that's used in factories. A local bar owner named Gus Guerra is the undisputed father of Detroit-style pizza. He got some of these automotive pans from a friend who worked in the factories. His Sicilian mother-in-law created a pizza recipe. They put the pizza in the automotive pan, put the pan in the oven, and that's how Detroit got its own style of pizza. A Detroit pizza is thick. Rather than mozzarella cheese, a Detroit pizza has Wisconsin-style brick cheese on top. The cheese extends all the way to the edges of the pan, so it gets caramelized and crispy around the edges. It's cut into squares, and most people eat this pizza with a knife and fork. If anyone offers you a Detroit slice make sure to ask for one of the corner pieces. 
Those are the pieces with the crispiest cheese. They're the best. You can get Detroit-style pizza at restaurants around the country. California is, let's just put it this way, California likes to be different. And so it is with its pizza. California doesn't have a specific style, and that is its style. A California pizza might have barbecue chicken on top, or it might have smoked salmon, pineapple on pizza. Anything goes in California. You can even get caviar on pizza. So California style is all about experimentation, bold flavors, local ingredients, and taking risks. A couple more, New Haven style pizza is like New York style, but it's even thinner and crispier. Quad Cities pizza has spicy sauce and a cracker-thin crust that they cut with scissors. Greek pizza in New England has a thick, chewy crust and a lot of olive oil. Again, listeners in Italy, I apologize. But this pizza is good. You guys know I lived a long time in Chicago, but I grew up near New York. And I have to say, I like New York pizza the best. You can get a whole pie or just a slice. Here's how it works if you just want a slice a pizza restaurant makes a bunch of pizzas with different toppings, and they're all under glass. You browse, you look at the pizzas they have, you tell them what you want, say pepper and onion or sausage, and they put the slice back in the oven for you. It cooks for a while. It comes out piping hot. They usually put it on a paper plate. You can eat it there or take it with you. So delicious. Now, if you know Domino's or Papa John's or Pizza Hut, the standard slice you get there is closest to New York style. It's not true New York style. The pizza from those national chains is smaller and the crust is thicker than what you see in the New York area, but those are closest to New York style. Made of. When you talk about the ingredients in a final product, you can use the expression made of. And you say that something is made of its main ingredients. This is used in the physical world. It can be about food or it can be about other things. Let's start by imagining a pizza. This is something we're all familiar with. What is a cheese pizza made of? In New York, a cheese pizza is made of gluten-heavy dough, tomato sauce, spices, and mozzarella cheese. That's what it's made of. Those are the foundational ingredients that combine to make a pizza. But what if you're making pizza dough? What is pizza dough made of? Most pizza dough is made of flour, yeast, water, salt, and olive oil. So that's food, but made of can be used for many types of physical things. 
Think of classic furniture. Think of a bookcase or a dresser that was made many years ago. That furniture is probably made of solid wood. That means a furniture maker created it from solid wood. But now think of modern, lower cost, discount furniture stores. Are the bookcases you buy at IKEA made of solid wood? No, they are not. They are made of particle board. That's like wood pieces and sawdust formed in the right shape. When you use made of, you don't have to state every ingredient or material used to make a final product. If you want to, you can say only the main material. You can say that a boat is made of fiberglass. That's the main material, but of course there are others, metal, glass, wood, and others. But if the main material is fiberglass, you can say the boat is made of fiberglass. The band Coldplay released an album called Moon Music, and they released it on vinyl too, on a record. But not just any record. These records are made of plastic removed from the ocean. There's a lot of plastic floating in the ocean. And a Dutch nonprofit teamed up with Coldplay to create a vinyl record made of recovered plastic from the ocean. I don't drop my phone. I don't knock it off tables. I don't abuse it. I don't drop it in a swimming pool, a bathtub, or worse. But a lot of people do drop their phones. And so phone makers advertise how strong and durable their phones are. Apple says, Its iPhone 15 is made of grade 5 titanium. I have no idea what grade 5 titanium is or whether it's a lot better than grade 4 or grade 3. But Apple helpfully informs us that its new iPhones are made of the same material that NASA uses in space rockets. That should probably be strong enough for most household accidents, right? I would think, I don't know. Anyway, we made it to the end of plain English number 699. Number 700 is coming up on Monday. Now, while you wait, make sure to do all the great exercises associated with this story. We have listening, pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary exercises. Plus, you can practice using the expression made of. That's all at plainenglish.com slash 699. See you next time. Hi there. Did you know we're about to release our 700th episode? That's amazing, right? And we've got a big celebration planned, and I'd like for you to be a part of it. During the week of August 12th, 2024, we are opening the doors to the full Plain English Plus membership totally free. Our membership has been around for several years, and we've never done anything like this. But to celebrate episode number 700, I want to invite you to take a peek into the PLUS membership from August 12th 
to August 18th, a full week. To get access, you do need a free account at plainenglish.com. So if you're not yet a free member, sign up now at plainenglish.com. No credit card required. If you do have a free account, practice signing in now so you have your login details ready. Then on August 12th, just log in like you normally would and our whole premium membership will be open to you. And that includes several chances to meet JR and me on Zoom. Make plans to join us the week of August 12th, 2024. I hope to see you then.